Hi, I'm Amy Clawson. And I'm Melissa Tapp. We are doctoral students at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte and proud DADD members. Today, we want to show you an example of how to use systematic instruction when teaching virtually. For this video, we will be using three different platforms, Zoom, Boom Cards, and Jamboard, and we will be modeling two different prompting systems, constant time delay and system of least prompts. First, Melissa will be learning to identify measurement tools using constant time delay and boom cards. So when I click to share my screen, I'm going to make sure I have share computer sounds clicked so that way Melissa can hear her reinforcer at the end. And then up at the top of my toolbar, I'm going to click remote control and give mouse keyboard control to Melissa Tap, so that way we can both access the materials on the screen. First, I'm gonna model the zero second time delay portion of the constant time delay procedure. So I'm going to read the question to Melissa and then immediately I'm going to prompt her to select the correct icon by hovering over the correct boom card on my screen. Melissa on her screen will also see the card highlighted and then she'll know to click on that. So let's go. Let's get started. Which tool is used to measure length? Ruler. Ruler. Great job, Melissa. Which tool is used to measure weight? Balance scale. Balance scale. You got it. Which tool is used to measure volume? Beaker. Beaker. Awesome. Which tool is used to measure temperature? Thermometer. Thermometer. Great job, Melissa. Once Melissa makes 100% accuracy over three consecutive sessions in her zero second, we'll move on to three second delay. In this part of constant time delay, Melissa will have three seconds to select the correct answer after I read the question. If she does not answer within three seconds, I'll prompt her the same way as zero seconds. If she makes an error, Boom Cards has this great feature where they will cross out the incorrect answer, reducing the field to three. Then I will prompt her by hovering over the correct answer. All right, Melissa, are you ready? Yep. All right, which tool is used to measure length? Ruler. Ruler. Which tool is used to measure weight? Oops. Which tool is used to measure weight? Balance scale. Balance scale. Which tool is used to measure volume? Oops. Which tool is used to measure volume? Beaker. Beaker. Which tool is used to measure temperature? Thermometer. Great job, Melissa. Thermometer. Let's watch a Go Noodle video. Banana, banana, meatball. Yeah. <laughs> We've been working on this skill for a while now, and Melissa is approaching mastery. Let's see what this three second time delay session looks like. Which tool is used to measure length? Ruler. Great job. Which tool is used to measure weight? Balance scale. You got it. Which tool is used to measure volume? Beaker. Great. Which tool is used to measure temperature? Thermometer. Awesome, 100%. Let's watch some Go Noodle. Let's make a pattern. Okay, here's one. Banana, banana, meatball. Banana, banana, meatball. Oh. 
Now Melissa will be learning to solve word problems using modified schema-based instruction, system of least prompts, and jam boards. So we've been working on this for a few weeks, so Melissa is pretty comfortable with using the task analysis and following all the steps. So for each step of the task analysis, which has 11 steps, I'll give Melissa the chance to be independent before I provide her with an indirect verbal prompt, a verbal prompt, a gesture, or a model. So when we are using system of least prompts under normal circumstances, the basic prompting hierarchy typically has four to five steps. Independent, verbal, model, partial physical, and full physical. But in this distance learning world of COVID-19, of course, I can't provide that partial and full physical prompt to Melissa. So I'm going to modify my hierarchy just a little bit to make it a little bit more effective. So I'm going to start after giving Melissa the opportunity to do this independently with MSBI. I will give her an indirect prompt so that way she can read what's next on the task analysis. So I'll say something like, what's next? And if Melissa responds, she'll respond by saying what's on the task analysis and then by doing that step. Next, I can give Melissa a direct verbal prompt. So for example, I can say circle pretzels and Melissa will respond to that. On Jamboards, I have a couple of different tools to help me with gestures model. So instead of gesturing by pointing like I might do in the classroom, instead I'm going to use the laser pointer on Jamboards to circle what I want to see. And as you can see, it disappears after a second, but that'll prompt Melissa to do the same with her pen. If Melissa needs a more intrusive prompt than that label, I can use a model by going up here to my highlighter tool circling what I want her to do and then prompting her to use the pen to then trace the highlighter. Also, I could use my numbers by pulling my number up, modeling it, getting rid of it, and then telling Melissa, your turn, and she can move the number up to where it belongs. You ready, Melissa? Yeah. Do you have your task analysis? Got it. Awesome. Let's get started. What comes first? Read the problem. You got it. Read it with me. Aaron, Aaron and Jose bought snacks, snacks at the game. at the basketball game. Awesome. Aaron bought two balls. Nice. Jose bought one hot dog. How many snacks did they buy in all? Thanks for reading with me. Let's mark off number one on our task analysis. What comes next? Circle the what's. All right. Pretzels. What else? Hot dog. Great job, Melissa. Mark off number two on your task analysis. What comes next? Write the label. You got it. How many? Write snacks. That's the word, write snacks. Almost there. Let's write the S together. Awesome. 
Awesome writing, Melissa. Mark off number three on your task analysis. Number four, same, different, more, or fewer. What type of problem do we have? Are pretzels and hot dogs same or different? Different. Different. Great job, Melissa. What comes next? Choose the graphic organizer. Which graphic organizer do we use for different? Group? You got it, circle group. Nice job, Melissa. Mark off number five on your task analysis. Next, we say the rule. You got it. Uh, small group, small group, big group. Nice job. What's next? Circle the numbers. Yep, let me get your blue pen for you. Nice work circling the numbers. Mark it off your task analysis. Fill in the number sentence. Aaron bought one, two pretzels. Two goes first. Two goes first, you got it. One. Put one in the box. Put one in the box. Oopsies. There, there go. you go. All right, mark it off our list. Right, plus or minus. Awesome, we're adding. Let's mark that off our task analysis. Next, we make sets. Nice job. Two pretzels. One hot dog. Great job. Let's say our rule again. Small group, small group, big group. Great. Make a big group. How many snacks do we have? One, two, three. Three snacks. All right. Mark number 10 off our list. Okay, solve and write answer. Three snacks. Two plus one equals three snacks. Great job, Melissa. High five. Nice. Let's listen to some Go Noodle. Oh, that's right. Make a pattern. Make a pattern. Let's make a pattern. All right. 